Hey, hey everybody, back at it on Thursday afternoon. Uh, gonna be knocking out Commander Stargazer for this one. So, uh, we are gonna have uh, a pretty cool one. I mean, I, I like these profile shots. Uh, they work out really well. And uh, we're going to see how this one goes, of course. But uh, posting this on the page real quick so everybody can see it. Live. All right, there we go. Uh, everybody's on board and can see everything. So, um, getting over here under this thing so I can see what's going on. Let me adjust the lamp a little bit. I'll try not to fry out the detail for you guys too much. Um, just had to move up the lamp. Hey, Jay, thanks for joining, man. I appreciate it. Now, if you don't know who Commander Stargazer is, he is the primary commander of the uh, Silverhawks team and stayed on their home base and uh, watched out for them from basically above. He watched out for radar and that kind of thing and watched out for you know uh, information and stuff coming in, reports and things like that. So um, he is the director of the Silverhawks for lack of a better address to give him or label to give him um, I don't want to say necessarily a title it's a little cliche but I guess if uh, the shoe fits but yeah this is our next to last um, our next to last Silverhawk card I will be doing this one today and then tomorrow for Friday I will be doing uh, bluegrass I won't be giving a set of uh, the cards away. You know, I won't be doing uh, the Friday giveaway on that one because of uh, it being part of this set. And I don't want you guys to get tied up for uh, for bluegrass. But, um, you know, sticking with the, uh, the Friday card character giveaway part of the giveaway itself. Um... Not to mention this weekend, I'm going to be hammering out so many pages. It's going to be nuts. Uh, I'm getting closure on 99% of my um, freelance, and I'm moving strictly into um, a couple of commissions that I'm keeping on board, but the rest of it will be all uh, my own books for Firestorm so that I can launch those next week because it's just been um, – I, I – don't want to sound like a braggart by it, but I'm a, I'm a very nice person when I kind of, when it comes to comics, and I want to help out everybody, and I try to help out with the co the smaller projects as much as I can, um, because I like doing those projects. Because one, it's a taste of independence rather than you know everything we've seen five thousand times over. But then on the other side of that, it's taking too much time of my uh, my production time, so I've got to cut back a little bit. Uh, at least until after the first of the year. So I've got a couple of projects that I've agreed to, but I will be dropping back to do my own stuff so that I can get my webcomic out for you guys because that property is very important to me. And um, with the industry going into the lull that it's going into uh, with Marvel and DC and things like that, making their transitions, I think it's a prime time to get that started and uh, release that title before everybody else goes heavy digital. And... Um, I've got a couple of things that I want to get out there for you guys before, you know, everybody starts dropping off or whatever, uh, as well. So that's the reason for doing that, but, uh, not disappearing, just cutting out some of my other stuff. Um, some of my other projects to ease the, uh, workload as it were. So that's why I'm doing that. So the projects that come out in 2018, late 2017, early 2018, um, those freelance projects, um, unless they take off somewhere big down the line, you know, an, an image contract or something like that comes out of it where I have to keep doing, you know, the work that I'm doing, then that's one thing. But uh, otherwise, I'm dropping it and going strictly on uh, paid commissions for the hiring comics that I have with actual publishers and then going into my own stuff as well to uh, move that on. 
because I get asked all the time, you know, it's where can we get your books? Where can we get your books? And I'm like, well, they're coming, you know, but these small publishers are holding up uh, a lot more and more. And now that they're afraid of the market crashing, they won't invest as much money into it for the production. So they're all waiting to see what Marvel and DC are going to do. And I can't afford for that to happen because it puts a lull in my workload. Um, not necessarily a financial problem by any means, but a, um, a lull in my work. And it ties up that time because I have to commit to those projects, you know, months in advance. So um, I've decided to drop off a bunch of those and start uh, moving on to other things. So anyway, if you guys are wondering, because I keep getting asked about it, and that's that's what the holdup was, is I've been doing so many other projects for people helping them out and whatnot. I've, uh, you know, smaller projects that I've postponed a lot of my work, which I shouldn't have done as much as I have. And I've decided to move back into getting uh, that material out. So hang tight with that because my stuff is coming up. Um, a lot of Firestorm stuff coming out. And uh, a lot less of the freelance stuff holding me up. And not to say that I won't do it again. It's just, you know, or do it in the future. It's just right now I have to start looking at getting my stuff out. Because I have a statement I want to make with Firestorm, and that's definitely not getting said right now with uh, hanging up on this. So, But I will continue the card. I will continue doing the daily cards, and um, for a little while longer at least. Um, as long as you guys keep coming and, and checking them out, I'll keep doing them. Um, we'll see where that goes, You know, like I said, on a day-to-day -day basis. When you guys don't come up and uh, keep checking them out, then I'll move on. But as of right now... We're really solid with it, but that's an update from where I'm coming from, and uh, what I've decided to do this week uh, was fill that out and then uh, tell you guys today and uh, go from there. I am uh, pushing forward with a couple of new things, and like I said, with Bluegrass coming out tomorrow to round out the Silverhawks, and then the Thundercats coming up this next week, or this weekend, and this next week on the card set. And then the other projects that I've actually got going on, it's going to be a heavy week, uh, a weekend for me. So my daughter and I were playing outside with the dog, with the lab, a little bit earlier. And apparently we let a gnat in behind us because they're huge because of all the friggin' water. <laughs> so if you see something buzz around, you're not going crazy. It's a, it's a gnat, so don't worry about it. Now, normally I would have I wouldn't draw through like this on this one, by the way. But this since this is solid black, uh, his tie is solid black, so I'm just gonna go ahead and and sketch it out because that way we don't have to mess with it. Um, I made that decision in the draft when I was sketching this thing a couple minutes before we went live, and I mean I did this thing like literally like ten minutes right before we came on, uh, and it took maybe a minute and a half to kick this one out because it's a simple profile shot. There's no real action pose to it. Um, so, I mean, it took me, you know, literally a few seconds just to whip this out. Um, I've drawn this character many, many times. Uh, I've colored this character as a kid many, many times over, you know, thousands of coloring books, literally thousands. I used to buy them by the, by the case. Um, I used to order them directly from a, uh, I, I think it was uh, Golden Books that used to do them as uh, coloring books. And I used to get them, I, I'm not sure of that company because I was little, but I used to spend every waking second of my allowance on those. Um, I would just get coloring books and comics all the time, mail order, and have them come straight to the house. And, uh, yeah. My folks used to think I was crazy, but it is what it is. I think that's true of all of us, though. All of our parents think think that we've lost our minds investing on all these comic books. But yet it's, it's the same thing, though. You know, um, everybody else has hobbies and stuff they have and they like. Um, some people like to shop and buy clothing. Some people like to buy shoes. Some people like to buy weapons or guns. And uh, my vice was comic books. Um, especially when I was, when I was, um, younger, I used to get tons and tons of comics and, and baseball cards and stamps. I was such a nerd, but, uh, I loved it. 
every bit of it. I used to collect all of it. And yes, I had the, the creepy kid um, stamp collection, you know, protector sheets and all that. Um, that collection is long gone um, uh, due to a uh, mishap. And I, I won't go into that, but um, someone took it upon themselves to take liberties with that, that collection and sell it themselves, a uh, family member, which I was distraught with at the time. But um, anyway, I was very, very disgusted with the situation. But everybody has people like that in their lives. You know, you come home and your dad sold your comic books or, you know, um, your brothers sold something, you know, your favorite baseball card or or whatever, and um, that that crap happens, unfortunately. But it is what it is. I mean, life goes on. But anyway, um, yeah, as far as this goes, I am really digging on this series. I'm glad I did this because um, I am drawing so many diverse characters with this series. And, you know, that's why I originally started this series was because of practice. And I wanted a unique way to draw everything that I could do in front of everybody that I could get to pay attention to it for training and exposure and drawing in front of people live because um, <clears throat> there were so many people that would, you know, there's always critics. And that's going to be one thing, you know, that you have to blow off because those are just people, you know, like everybody else, everybody thinks they're a critic these days because everybody wants to be some kind of, you know, um, major voice out there and find their way. And a lot of people fall short with that in the amateur bracket. And then they come up and say things, you know, like um, they'll critique your art without uh, professional manners and uh, that kind of thing. And then I've got friends that give me, you know, that, that are legit friends and they just give me their opinion, which I, you know, I tease, but... I don't take that serious at all. I just say, you know, well, they're correct and it's mine and you can't say anything and, you know, that's blah, blah, blah. But it's something I, I am known for playing about because of the fact that I don't get bent. Um, however, like I said, with people coming up at me and uh, sticking their nose in it where they don't belong, I mean, a, a fan critique and saying it's not, co it's not sitting with me right is one thing. But then there are people out there that like to stick their nose in it and, you know, they claim to be art teachers and this, that, and the other. And it's like, really? You want to come and tell me how to redo my card when you don't understand my style at all? But, you know, it, it's hit and miss with that kind of stuff. You have to take that stuff with a grain of salt. But with doing this set, I've gotten a lot thicker skin, especially in social media, because uh, of the fact that, you know, I deal with people on a daily basis and I'm used to that. But to find out that there's so many people that are so positive out there and supporting this. And I appreciate it so much. There are just as many that come up and say something nasty or, or derogatory and try to provoke just to be nasty because of the fact that they're jealous of what they can't do. And, you know, um, I was talking with a friend offline that said it didn't resonate with him today. And, uh, he's probably watching this right now. And, and I want him to know this isn't personal towards him at all. Cause I'm just, conversing here and like I said he's one of the people I, I joked about sincerely and you know I came at him and I was like man the eyes are correct don't you worry about it kind of thing and played it off and that was it and we had a good laugh about it but I, I don't get bent or personal however I have had people come up and tell me you know you should before you go live with that you should redraw that card because it would look so much better this way and they don't have a clue what they're talking about They've sent me images of girls, you know, standing there. Um, they'll send me portraits of uh, stuff they've done and reference photos and stuff. And it's just like, really? Why? Why are you doing this right now? And um, that's something this series has helped me do is get over a big hump of that problem. Because beforehand, I would always get bent about it and just tell people to basically, you know, ship off. <laughs> in a leaky boat we'll put it that way and um you know they would get bent at me and i was like well you know i can take feedback and criticism when i ask for it or when an editor gives it to me not when you not doing anything remotely close to comic book art tell me that you know i don't do that i don't come up and critique people because of the fact that i don't want to be criticized and critiqued myself um i see that kind of crap all the time but 
this series has built up a, a much thicker skin and understanding as to where people are coming from because they are egotistical within themselves and they think that they owe me the blessing of their work or their critique and criticism. And it cracks me up. If you guys are getting ripped on by anybody, take it with a grain of salt and tell them to blow it out their butt. And um, for the younger viewers that are listening, please don't do that. that. That's an adult phrase. Don't do that because you will get in trouble. Um, if you tell a teacher <laughs> or your mom and dad or anybody like that, you will get in trouble. Youngsters don't do that. But um, that is for when you're grown up and, you know, you're professional and you're in the job and you're doing it. And what I'm saying is, is think that, but don't necessarily say it because it doesn't need to be said. You know, people judge the way they want to judge. Just I'm basically saying blow them off and, you know, keep doing what you're doing. And if you're messing up and you ask a professional uh, colleague or help, you know, a teacher for help or whatever, it, you know, that's different. That's one thing. But for these yahoos out there that, that, that think they need to stick their nose in it and say, you know, this is the way you should do comics or this is the way you should do comics and come at me with pictures and stuff. Oh man, I'm, I'm so done with that. And I'll unfriend you real quick. I have, I've unfriended a lot of people because of that, because I don't want somebody that's basically hypocritical because they don't want to do the work of a daily, a daily artist that I do in my job and then come at me that that'll get you gone quicker than anything. Because I don't want your judgment on me because if you're not better than I am by work ethic alone, then there's no need to. So don't let people walk on you like that. And that's part of why I do this series is because of the fact that I'm exposing every day that I can do in very little time what a lot of people say that it takes them all day to do. Because I've seen people come up and say, you know, it takes me eight hours for a sketch card. Well, you're taking too long. And, you know, this is twice the size of a formal sketch card because normally sketch cards are, you know, uh, a little two by three half sheet of card and that's it i mean they're microscopic and then you got the bigger proof cards which are fine and those do take a little more time but you know um it depends on how much detail and how much proofing you put into them yourself so keep that kind of stuff in in line with what you're doing and don't let anybody talk you down and out of it um because i'll be doing these cards as long as uh you guys are fans of them and want to see them but uh on the same note though I don't need anybody else's criticism. And, uh, I mean, you either resonate with it or you don't. I mean, that's that's cool. I'm fine with that. But uh, be careful how you disrespect people by taking liberties because they may not want your critique. And if they're doing it for critique and say, hey, cr critiques are welcome, then give it. But if not, keep your mouth shut and leave it alone because it's not for you. It's for them. Big difference. Um, you know, I, I see people gripe at kids that way all the time, you know, and it's just one of those things where I just want to tear into them. But I have to step back and say, you know, uh, why are they teaching that kid that that kind of thing? You know, because young artists work with me all the time and they're like, well, you know, my dad said and I'm like, can your dad draw better than you? Well, no. Well, what does your dad do to make that happen? Well, my dad works in advertising, but he's not an artist. He's you know, well. If he's not doing the work and doing 10 times more of what you're doing, he has no rhyme or, rhyme or reason to do that. Did you ask for that kind of respect, kind of criticism? Well, no, I'm 14. I don't really want to know what he thinks. I want to do my job without him worrying about it. I want him to be proud of me for what I do, but I don't want him to be in my face about it. Well, yeah. You know, it's one of those things where the parents stick their nose into something that it shouldn't be, and they can ruin a kid for that. And uh, I see that all the time. And then I'll see people talk about the the kids at school messing with them and stuff. And it's just like, you know, they're just jealous because they can't do it. And everybody's a critic because they're a fan. Keep that in mind. Where are you coming from? Are you a fan doing this when you're going to give somebody res uh, a critique or a response? Or are you a legitimate professional that is someone they've asked out of respect for that because I ask people all the time, I ask professional artists all the time. Uh, one of my favorite guys to go to was um, was Rick Buckler before he died, um, before he passed away. And um, I, I talked to Kelly Jones um, every other day. I shoot him something and talk to him about it. Really, really nice guy. I've known him for a while and he, he's just really cool. But I built up that relationship and respect 
from him before I started submitting work to him and asked him to review some stuff. He's looking at my new portfolio when I'm done with it. You know, it's that kind of thing. Um, but out of respect for you guys mentioning these names and dropping these names, be sure not to go to these people and start harassing them for reviews and stuff because that's not what they do. That was a personal thing for me because I built up the rapport with them. Now, um, same thing, you know, with a bunch of other artists. I know Rusty Gilligan, he's been in the business since 78. Um, I, I shoot stuff off of him all the time. Um, he bounces stuff off of me as well. We're, we have that type of friendship and relationship and, you know, we're colleagues and we respect that. And a lot of times we will disagree because he's a Silver Age guy, a uh, Silver Age and Golden Age guy, especially the Golden Age stuff. And uh, sometimes he doesn't like my work. He says it's too modern, you know, and I totally get that. I totally respect it. He says it's not his thing and we move on. Um, we have debates about, we have respective debates about digital and um, print all the time because I believe it should be print and digital he believes it should be print so you know and that's not being pro or con one or the other it's just he he favors print is what i'm saying and i favor digital and print but um he's coming around you know business wise and like i said i don't want to throw him under the bus either because that's one of those things it's just a different view of the conversation that we had recently as the example but what I'm saying is if you go to get, get relationships for people that are better than you and will get critiques and understand where they're coming from, as long as you respect their opinion as an opinion, not as gospel, then you'll be okay. But if you start taking it as a gospel type of situation, you know, it's like, that's it, man, we're just done. Well, then you're, sh you're basically shooting yourself in the foot. Don't do that. So... You know, but take these people with a grain of salt and do what you can and keep your work going the way you want to do it, not what everybody else wants you to do. Um, you know, because I, I hear all the time, well, you know, the fans pay the bills. And I'm like, well, if your fans are paying your bills and you're letting them control it that way, then they're not they're doing way more than controlling your bills, buddy. Um, you know, just a, a, a harsh truth there. But... uh I'm making sure I'm feathering this out. That's why I got quiet there for a second. But, uh, yeah, you know. <clears throat> hey, guys, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, Tom. Yeah, definitely. I put in a lot of hours. I mean, I'm not saying I'm the hardest working guy in the, in the industry because I, I know a lot of guys that do work hard. And, I mean, they pump out some serious stuff, man. But um, I... I'm right up there. I like to I like to push it. When I hear someone's doing six pages a week, you know, um, then I like to do ten. Or if someone I hear someone's doing three pages a day, I'm pushing towards uh, the ability to do five, and I'm I'm pushing towards that successfully. Um, I have done six pages once. I exhausted myself, and that was 21 hours of work, and I won't do that again. But <laughs> but an average of um, <clears throat> of three to four pages a day is nothing, not, literally nothing. And I mean, I work, you know, I'm here 12, 15, 16, 18 hours a day with no problem. But I have to uh, dedicate to family time for my daughter and whatnot as well, so I have to pay attention for that kind of thing. But she's here with me most of the time, so I don't have to worry about it. And, um, you know, I, I don't have to bother with all of that stuff because I'm a lot faster than most people have been blessed with that, thank goodness. Um, that gnat is persistently like right here because of the warm lights. I'm going to have to get something. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks, but there's going to be a gnat harmed in the making of this video. If it keeps getting in my face, um, but you know, it just depends on what, what the workload is and how I do it. I lay out three books at a time and I'll have a stack of 30, 40 to 50 pages laying around um in sets and i'll have to knock them all out at one time um i go through pencil them all uh lay them all out pencil them all and then knock the book out and that's how i i knock out a couple of books a week that way I, it's kirby style i've talked about it numerous times on here I, I love talking about that um because it's you know what jack kirby did he used to lay out the entire book and just hammer it out man i mean he got a thought in his mind of what he was going to do and that's what he did 
and he was doing three books a week, you know, sometimes five, and that's just crazy. But he had an artistic system that he could definitely nail it out with no problem. Okay. I think we're going to call that done for Commander Stargazer. Oh, I'm going to put in this shade right I'm going to put in this, this reflection right here. Just kind of pop that off just a little. But now I'm going to call it done because I don't want to mess with that too much. Um, let me see if I can get them out of the deck here. And I'll show you guys all of these all at once. Here is the entire team here. Let's see if we can get these on camera. There is uh, Quicksilver, Steel Heart, Steel Wheel. Um, down here is the Copper Kid. Oh, that's the Archangel one that I had in the mix there at the back of the deck. Because I still need to ink it. Um, it was the extra one. I'm going to see if I can hold some of these up here and let you guys get a look at uh, all of these. So now we've got these all lined up. And tomorrow we'll round out the set of six with bluegrass. So you guys can have that going on. And um, then after that we're going to do Thundercats. Which, the funny thing was, I had a bunch of people, um, I had a couple of people tell me that uh, they wanted to see more of the cover going on, uh, of the Nova cover that I did. Uh, I'm sorry, of the Shipwreck cover that I did, because they didn't get to see it. Um, I wanted to throw that out there. Cancer, uh, cancer uh, the cancer charity for, um, let's see, comic books for cancer, which with uh, John Rogers. You guys can check him out. Facebook searching. This one is the book that I finished up uh, just the other day for that. A couple of people asked me to put it up there because I didn't get to see it. So I thought I would. And I have a Princess Leia one coming out that I showed you guys yesterday, which I won't bother showing again. We're going to wrap this thing up. And uh, tomorrow, like I said, bluegrass from the um, Silverhawks. And then Saturday and Sunday we have um, Thundercats starting to lead into the next week. So you guys hang tight on that one. And thanks for hanging out with me as always. I'll see you tomorrow.